Hi everybody, welcome back. So today I have a little pocket hand auger here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna open it up and see what we have inside. So we have a protective case on, on the outside. Just inside of that, we're gonna have a handle that we can put on, on a stick just to make it easier on our hands. And then we're gonna have our hand auger itself. We have a little collar right there with a beveled end so that we can hammer that onto a stick to get our stick all, all the way through the right size of that pipe. With that, the construction of this, this is supposed to be leather. Uh, it's obviously not leather. It's a cheap pleather. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my stitch ripper. I'm gonna tear the whole thing apart. I'm then gonna use this as a template to make a brand new one out of actual leather. Now that I got my template cut out, I'm just gonna trace it out onto the leather. Once I have it traced out onto the leather, I'm just gonna put a ruler there to make it easier to get that straight line. And then I'll cut out the template. Once I have the bottom half cut out, I'll do the exact same thing for the top half. I'll trace out my template and I'll cut that out as well. For this project, I'm gonna go with a little bit longer piece of leather for the belt snaps. The reason why I wanna do that is I wanna put a couple additional snaps on there. This will give me the option of either putting it on there on a temporary basis using those snaps or putting it through the eye loop so that it can stay on my belt more long term. Once I have everything all cut out, what I'll start to do is I'll punch holes all the way around. Once all my holes are punched in, I'm going to start to sew that together. So I'm going to start by sewing the back side, the strap that's going to hold it onto my belt. What I'm going to start with for sewing, I'm going to sew the strap on the back on first. It's going to hold that to my belt because that's not going to be accessible later on once we sew the whole thing together. So I'm going to what I'm gonna sew next is where the split was on the old one. Now these splits were left open on the original one, but I'm gonna sew this together with an X pattern because it's gonna hold up a little better and look a little nicer as well. At this point, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect the front half and the back half together. So I'll sew those together really quickly after I punch all my holes in. Once I get to the bottom here, I'm gonna to have to take my time punching the holes in because I'm dealing with a piece of leather that's gonna be curved and concaved at the same time. So it's gonna take a little longer to punch those holes in to make sure everything lines up properly and then make sure that we do a nice job on the sewing. Once we've gotten that complete, continuing the box stitch all the way up to the end. So I mentioned earlier that I wanna have two ways to attach this to my belt. Currently, I can slide my belt through the hole here. What I'm going to do in addition to that is I'm going to punch some holes in, put some button rivets in. Once I have my button rivets in, I'll be able to put that on my belt just with the button rivets or any kind of short-term use where I'm not going to be wearing it for a long time. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to put a snap on the front. So I'm just checking here to see exactly where I want to place that snap. And then we'll do the exact same thing again. We'll punch our hole in. Once we have our hole punched in, we'll put our button snaps on and then we'll hammer those together. All right, so I've been thinking about this for a little while now. What's gonna end up happening is with this going in, this is quite sharp on the bottom. These edges are sharp as well. What's gonna happen over time, and you can kind of saw it on the original pleather package that it came in, is it was poking through the backside. Um, I'm concerned it's gonna poke through the bottom. So I've been thinking about what I can do to stop that from poking through the bottom. What I've come up with is I have these nice mats. Uh, we have a whole bunch of them downstairs. This was an extra one that got paint all over it. So I've been using this for, for a few other projects as well. So I'm gonna cut a chunk out of this. I'm gonna put it in the bottom so that it's not gonna be able to poke all the way through and then we'll have that little, make a little divot in it as well for that to fit into. So let's do that right now. From here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to super glue some of the stitching where those stitches line up just so they can't become unraveled or undone at all. Once I have that done, I'm going to add some super glue to the foam pad, stick that into the bottom to make sure that stays in there and can't come out. 
while I'm waiting for that to dry, I'm going to go downstairs. I'm going to sharpen my bow saw before we go outside and start a fire. Make sure they're in proper working order. Any kind of a bow saw, the teeth can become misaligned. So if you look at the teeth right here, I just bent these out a little bit. So you can get these special tools right here that are specifically designed to, to put those teeth in the right angle. So how they work is you just need to clamp down. Then you can either tighten or loosen the end just by clamping down. This angled piece right here won't move. Then we can tighten it back down. And then if you look really closely, you can see that it'll have a size markings all the way around. So you can tell it exactly how much you want those offset. So to use it, it's pretty straightforward. You line it up with your teeth. Once it's all lined up with your teeth, you give it a squeeze and then change sides on the next tooth. As we work our way down the saw blade, we're going to continue switching side for every other tooth. One option would be to go down, do all of one side, go back and then do the other side as well like I did it do in the video. What we'll do next is we'll take a triangular file that's specially designed for saw teeth and what we'll do is we'll run that across our saw teeth and that'll help us sharpen our teeth. Keep in mind while you're doing this, you want to switch from the left side to the right side for every other teeth and match the angle that's already existing on the saw. That's going to get you the sharpest teeth possible. We're almost done now. What we'll do is we'll go outside and see if we can get a Swiss torch going using our new auger. I'm near where I fell into the, the brook in my last video. So this is a tree that came down last year. I'm just going to cut a chunk off. So what we'll do next is we'll drill a hole into the side with the R auger and a hole in the top as well after we make a handle for it. So what I've done is I've knocked off all the branches and then I'm just going to give it a quick tap down to make sure that it fits on nice and snugly and is about the middle of the stick. And then once we have our handle on, we'll be able to screw that into the log, making our round hole for our torch. Once we have both two holes screwed in, one in the top, one going to the side, we'll start a fire. So to do that, we'll put a couple of little sticks inside the middle. Then we'll grab some birch bark, put that on top. Using our ferro rod, we'll create a spark that'll start our fire. Now this wood is quite wet, so it is giving me a little bit of trouble sustaining that fire. But after a few minutes, I am able to get it going and sustained quite well. Something we can do to make it burn a little bit better. An air hole on both the front and the back. It'll allow it to breathe a bit better and get that fire going a lot faster as well. Now that I have the fire growing really well, I'm going to grab some water from the creek. Put a couple sticks on top so that I can boil that water. Now for my next video, what I'm probably going to do, there's three different ways you can make a sweetest torch. I'll go through all three ways to make the sweetest torch and we'll figure out which one's going to work the best. The other thing, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. Now, just as I was running out of time to record today, the water did start to boil. Unfortunately, as it started to boil, it did fall over. And because I'm out of time for today, thank you guys for watching and come back and see the next video that I put up, which is probably going to be about how to make multiple different types of switch torches.